Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our sixth lesson on uh, flight operations. We're going to talk about search and rescue. It's important that you uh, know, hopefully you will never have to know firsthand why this is important, but uh, you should be aware of the um, services that are available uh, to you uh, should you require them. Let's get started with this video. This is a fantastic video. Um, this guy gratefully uh, made a little uh, vlog uh, on uh, a crash of a Cirrus aircraft and uh, and just the uh, rescue that entailed. And this is uh, fantastic. Unfortunately, a lot of the uh, search and rescue technicians in the uh, Royal Canadian Air Force uh, show up to find dead people. And thankfully, this is somebody who's uninjured and was no doubt very grateful uh, for his rescue. Just had to pull the caps parachute. I'm in the middle of Quebec trying to get my SOS to work. She blew oil. I was losing oil pressure. I'm just gonna take this vlog just so people can learn from this experience so that something good comes out of it. This is just surreal. Look at the force. Split the door right in half, which of course allowed me to go out. To the grace of God, the reality setting in that this could uh, this could be a while. The bugs are so bad. I know I got a lighter in the center console. Oh, the smell of fuel is just thick. Come, Birch. Shit. Fuckers, what? That muscle smoke like a son of a bitch. Gotta get some. Uh, Smoke up there because my parachute canopy is down in the woods. Smoke some brats. Smoke some brats, baby. The aircraft looking for you spotted the smoke. Fantastic, baby. And my dad, I was able to message him. He said, uh, yes, God, it help is on the way. Should be a helicopter circling. Go. No. Dash 8 also on the way. Stay with aircraft. He says, yes, God, search and rescue has your coordinates. I say perfect. The number of rescue services available. First off is the Joint Rescue Coordination Center. There's, uh, they're based in various Air Force bases across Canada. I'm familiar with uh, Trenton, and then there's uh, one in Comox, probably one on the East Coast as well, Winnipeg. And uh, 
These are the uh, military members that uh, will come rescue you when you are in the middle of in the middle of nowhere. So they have helicopters, they have Hercules aircraft, uh, the caribou aircraft, they have all sorts of uh, aircraft. Uh, the uh, search and rescue technicians, uh, you know, wear parachutes. They might jump out of the aircraft if they need to. Also, we have a Coast Guard available. Uh, in maritime regions, Coast Guard will respond to uh, vessels in distress. More often in urban areas, you're gonna have the police service. If you're uh, close to a city, the police can just uh, drive up maybe to a trailhead and just walk in, hike in, and uh, come get you out. And then Parks Canada also offers search and rescue service within uh, national parks. Okay, this is uh, important. Uh, the emergency locator transmitter is designed to activate on impact. It doesn't, it's not guaranteed to activate on impact, just like an airbag is not, will not always deploy. So if you do crash and you need it, you want to turn it on in case the automatic feature has not uh, turned itself on. The uh, ELT can be automatic fixed or portable. You can test the ELT the first five minutes of every hour. So what you do is, you would uh, listen on your radio on 121.5, then you would turn your ELT on, listen only for a second or two, and then you can shut your ELT off. And uh, there's a maintenance requirement, you have to replace the battery every two years. There are a couple different types of units. Uh, the older one, 121.5 megahertz is a tone only. Uh, it just kind of sends a siren sound over that frequency and uh, and it can get picked up by their aircraft listening on that frequency and then the uh, military can kind of home in on that frequency. The newer units are a 406 unit. They uh, transmit the aircraft identification and often a GPS coordinate as well. So they're a much better unit. Uh, they, uh, just like the older ones, they turn on automatically, but it will tell you exactly whose airplane uh, is uh, in distress and exactly where it is. So they're not having to home in on uh, on uh, an aircraft like the 121.5. I, uh, I also carry uh, a spot. Uh, some people carry Garmin inReaches. They're fantastic as well uh, because they'll tell you exactly where you are as well. Uh, and even if you crash, it'll be the last uh, known position. If you have an emergency, uh, like I mentioned, you turn the ELT on immediately uh, because th there's no guarantee that it is activated. And uh, if you need to wait out weather, you want to notify air traffic control by radio. If you're unable to contact anyone, you turn the ELT on at the search and rescue time. You contact search and rescue on 121.5 once they are in range and advise intention. So that's assuming your radio is still working, your electrical system still working, uh, you can make uh, periodic uh, calls. If you have an aircraft emergency, you want to declare a mayday on the current frequency. If you're talking to air traffic control, you just tell them. And if you're not talking to anyone specifically, you make a broadcast on 121.5. You're going to broadcast your call sign, the nature of the emergency and your intentions and your position and altitude. If you have a transponder, you're going to squawk 7700. Let's briefly touch on some uh, survival basics. Uh, hopefully you have some bush sense. Uh, if you spend some time outdoors, you're probably uh, well versed in these techniques. But uh, just briefly, your first priority is to uh, provide first aid to any uh, passengers or crew members. The second one is to start a fire. This is to keep you warm as well as to uh, provide some motivation uh, and encouragement to you. Uh, third, you're going to be looking for water. Hopefully, I always, when I go flying, I always have a bottle of water with me that I don't touch unless I absolutely need it. I just throw it in my flight bag just in case. Once you've accomplished those four things, or those three things, the fourth thing is uh, make a shelter, then start signaling, and then the last thing is uh, get some food. A basic survival kit is invaluable. The more advanced, even better. Uh, I, I prefer just making my own survival kit, things I want, and uh, I, I have mine. I throw it into a uh, roughly a shoebox sized um, waterproof uh, container. But you definitely want something like a triangular bandage, knife, fire starter, and water bottle. ELT transmits on 121.5 and or 406. When needed, turn the ELT on and leave it on. Test the ELT on the first five minutes of every hour when you need to test it for maintenance purposes. A quick question, what is the Emergency aviation radio frequency, A, 121.5, so that is the correct answer, or A, correct answer. B, 126.0, uh, that's not correct. 
C406. So remember 406 is the frequency that the ELT will transmit on, but it's not a radio frequency that you can actually call somebody on. So that's not correct. D, A, and C are correct. So obviously that's not correct. So correct answer is A, 121.5. That uh, concludes this lesson on search and rescue. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you in our next lesson.